Welcome back to yet another episode of Becoming a Filmmaker. Now, although this is a show about how to film, um, there is something I would like to address real quick. It doesn't really have much to do with filming or this episode or anything, but it is a serious subject that I would like to bring up. Just, just to spread awareness and all that, all that jazz, right? So recently I decided that I was going to fake my own wedding just to see what it was like. And um, I didn't spend a lot of money on it, you know, because it was fake, you know, I just wanted to see what, what it would be like, what would happen. And, um, and I hired a photographer. Now this photographer was very, very cheap. I did not expect them to do anything more than just snap a few pictures, print them out and give them to me. But they went to the length of editing the photos. All right, now, I don't know what they were thinking, all right? But these are the photos that I got back on my wedding day. Notice that the groom has been completely edited out. I don't know where he went, he was gorgeous, all right? It was gorgeous, but she edited him out. Photoshopped him out, whatever you say. I don't know, Duringo, I'm not a photographer. I don't think they were a photographer, because if they were, they would have left him in, all right? And when I say that he was stunning, he was stunning. He had this perfect, perfect angular nose and this chisel, but not very chisel jaw because if it's too chiseled, then it's just you, right? At least in my opinion. And he had this hair that was just, well, well, well not like mine actually, you know, just brilliant. Um, it was, he was great, he was great. And um, he just, she just cut him out. And then me, she took, she, she edited out my wedding dress. Who does that? But that's not even what upset me the most, all right? What upset me the most was how she edited my face. I want you to look at it very carefully, all right? Now this is a picture of my normal face. And this is a picture of my face after she got done editing. Now she said she didn't touch my face, but I know better. After she already touched my dress and my man, I know she touched my face, all right? I mean, look at that weird smile. I look like a crazed loony who's lactose intolerant and has been to the Dairy Queen too many times. Now look at my nose. It's not perfect anymore. She changed it. She made it all different. Look at my hair. I mean, it's it's not the same. It's not the same person in both photos. I don't know what she did, but she messed it up. And it got me to thinking, so many people are able to edit photos to make themselves look better instead of worse, which can cause us to have so many unrealistic beauty standards. It's insane, right? And I just want to let you know that you don't have to look like all the people you see on Instagram. You don't have to look like all the people you see on, on pictures, you know, when you're shopping through, through the mall or through Target and you see a picture of someone and you think, oh, they look nice. It's probably not what they really look like. They, they, they probably got edited, you know? So, um, yeah, you're fine with how you are, all right? You don't have to look like edited people. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, we can move on to what we're actually talking about in this episode of the series of Becoming a Filmmaker, and that is makeup. Now makeup is absolutely brilliant in the world of filmmaking because you can change the way your face looks to look however you need your character to look. All right, now let's talk a bit about makeup with a professional makeup artist. Hello, professional makeup artist. Hello. Tell us a bit about your work as a makeup artist. Oh, it's lovely, it's lovely. I get to look at people's faces and say, so that's not quite right, and then change it to how I want it to be. I see. So um, what advice would you give to beginner filmmakers who want to do their character's makeup? Well, how beginner are they? A very beginner, like just starting out. Well, first of all, I suggest you learn what you're doing and then uh, just start. Any advice? Any encouraging words? No. Oh. What? You think makeup is just some hobby you take up on a whim? You just decide, hey, I'm gonna do it and do it? No, it takes years and years of dedication and practice to learn an inkling of what you need to know. I give you no encouraging words, everyone. Just words of warning. Do not do it unless you're absolutely sure that's what you want to do for the rest of your life. So what type of makeup would you suggest? Like, what brands? They cannot afford the makeup they need. Oh, well, it was nice having you on the show. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is that, is that Paul I see? Paul, come here. Unstable chair. <laughs> this is Paul, an evil writing teacher, and he has forced me to allow him a regular spot on the show. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, Paul, we have a bit of a problem. Oh, no, what is it? Well, this episode is about makeup, and I was really uh, counting on that professional makeup artist over there to keep the show afloat, but he sank it. 
Oh, that is a problem. Good thing I am here. Do you know a lot about makeup? No. To put something on this face would be like spray painting the Mona Lisa. But I am amazing, so as long as I'm on the show, I, it should be a hoot. Well, that's not untrue. I've got an idea. It's a creative vision I've had for a long time. Okay. Okay, so this short film starts out with a girl in her graveyard. She has concealer all over her face so that she looks dead. And then she wanders farther and farther away from the graveyard. Uh, and as she does, more and more makeup gets added to her face. Uh, obviously, you do not see it getting added, you know, obviously. But um, it gets added and she looks more and more alive. And then she is so alive, she decides she wants to do something with her life, you know? And so she goes to a bookstore and gets a book called How to Become a Writer in 10 Easy Payments, which you can also get on my website. So this is a commercial? Oh yes, it can be. If you wanted to, yeah, we could do that. You know what? Let's do it. Really? Really. Oh, great! Here's the screenplay. Wow, you're really prepared. I like that. You know, you're destined for great things. Thank you. Um, Paul? Mm, yes? What do all these symbols mean? Oh, that's my special system for explaining dance moves. <laughs> Aren't they lovely? Dance moves? Yes, it's a ballet. Do you do ballet? Well, no, but I thought that you did. Why did you think I did? I don't know, you just look like a ballerina to me. Okay, can we film it without it being a ballet? No. The ballet is what fully expresses the beauty in this meaningful tale. Okay, can we pretend to do a ballet? What is wrong with you, you stupid girl? Pretend to do a ballet if you go mad? Stop, stop, stop! <gasps> ah. Come on, it was just paper. It didn't really hurt. Okay, we're clearly not doing that. Look, Kendra, do you have any makeup anywhere? Well, yeah. Well, bring it here. I'm sure we can come up with some way to show your friends. Uh, I'll make it work and it still be entertaining. Okay, I'll get my makeup bag. Alrighty, here's my makeup. Okay, let's see what you've got here. You use all this, do you? Oh, this bag is disgusting. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look. Um, oh, this looks interesting. A nude lipstick. Oh, we can use this for when uh, the character of my story looks dead. That's concealer. Oh, okay. Uh, here we have concealer. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this is not sponsored, by the way. We just got concealer. Here's some more concealer. Um, and some more. How much you got in here? This, I don't know what that is. And uh, here's some concealer that is too dark for her face. Why do you need so much? Well, I use it as foundation. Oh, then why do you need three types of foundation? It's all here. Wearing makeup looks kind of fun now that I'm digging through this bag. Um, I might start wearing it myself. Wouldn't that be like spray painting the Mona Lisa? Well, she could use a good spray painting in my opinion. Okay, what else do we have? We have, oh, some sort of sponge that feels kind of moist and looks like it's died five times. Kendra, look at this. I have seen dog pox cleaner than this. Look at it. Okay, I haven't washed it in a while. Well, I will run it through my washing machine for you. And here we have a glamorous eyeshadow palette, which, oh, hello, it has a mirror in it that shows me my beautiful face. Oh, I could put some of this on my face right now. Look at me. Oh, I guess it's for my eyes, isn't it? Oh. Anyway, it appears that um, that my friend here uh, has only ever used one color from this, has used it all up, and never touched any of the other colors. I'll take this if you don't mind. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, this is makeup, and uh, you put it on your face as you saw me doing. Uh, don't I look pretty? Hmm? No, not really. Oh, shut up. And, uh, yeah, you just put it on your face and uh, you're good to go. I think that concludes our episode, don't you? I think so. This was definitely our most difficult episode to put together.
We merely flew by the seat of our pants, but I think it turned out well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Becoming a Filmmaker. If you did, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. And to leave a comment saying how wonderful you think I am. Yes, definitely do that. All right, goodbye. Bye.